the kingdom of Champa flourished from the 2nd century to 15th century. It first appeared around present day Danang and later by 8th century spread south to what is now Natang and Fanrang. The charm adopted Hinduism, employed Sanskrit as a sacred language and borrowed heavily from Indian art. One of the most stunning sites in Poyan area is Misun, spelled M-Y-S-O-N, Vietnam's most important charm site. During the centuries, the capitals were Simmapura, Indrapura and others. Mysore became a religious center under the king Padravarman in the late 4th century and was occupied <coughs> until 13th century. Shiva was regarded as the founder and protector of Champa dynasties. In spite of this highly Hindu impact, it is considered that people of Champa were descended from the Malaysia Polynesian settlers from the Borneo island who came here during the 1st and the 2nd century BC. Champa reached its uh, apogee in the 9th and 10th centuries AD. Thereafter, began to correction, began a gradual decline under the pressure from the Daivet. Capitals were Indrapura from 1875 to 978 AD, Vijaya 978 to 1485 AD, and Panduranga 18, 1485 to 1832, and Panduranga was annexed in 1832. While the religion started as a Hinduism, Buddhism came for a short period with the return of Hinduism. Later, by the end, majority of uh, Cham people became, uh, embraced Islam and almost 85% of them are Islamic. A small percentage of Hindus are Brahmins. The charm also adopted elements of Indian political in addition to the religious cult and architectural culture. Charm people began to create stone inscriptions in both Sanskrit and in their own language, which is a unique script. The first king, Badravarman, who ruled from 380 to 413 AD at Mysore established a god named Padreshwara which he felt king and the god were blend into one and Ishwara of course refers to Shiva. The other kings included Shambhuvarman and several other names that are very South Indian. One of the kings, Prakasha Dharma, who took the name of Vikrantavarman one, at his coronation, claimed to have descended through his mother from the Rushi Kaundanya.
and the serpent princess Soma, the legacy ancestor of Kumar of Cambodia. The other sage referred to, for example, Indravarman declared himself to be descendant of Biragu. And Biragu is described in Mahabharata. Indravarman later adopted Mahayana Buddhism for a period of time. And only later, Champa returned to Hinduism by 925 AD. There were several wars between Cambodians and Champa kings. Even though there was a, some intermarriages took place at the royal families. <coughs> the Champa kingdom with a gradual decline and suffering their ultimate defeat in the 15th century. By then the two kingdoms in what is currently Thailand, which is Siam, was one around Sukhothai, which I will be visiting next week, and the other one, Ayodhya. As if this was not enough, even the Mongols invaded Vietnam from the north after they took over Beijing. As early as 1307 AD, when the Cham King Jaya Simavarman III was captured and taken, his wife refused to accept what can be referred as a sati, that means she would have been burnt along with her husband, escaped this charm custom and returned to her place, joining her family. Cham people worshipped Shiva, Parvati, Shakti, Vishnu, Brahma, Ganesh, and later Bodhisattva. Many of these sculptures are well preserved and is present at the Denang Museum. Lion was part of the religion as in Hinduism, lion is considered avatar of uh, Vishnu. However, subsequently, the Buddhist took over lion. For example, even on Ashoka pillar, lion is present. And then in China, what I see, the animal symbol of Hinduism is elephant, as they have taken over lion to represent Buddhism. The Cham temples are not only in uh, Misson, it's also present at uh, Nathang, which is about 500 miles from here, and I will not be able to visit it. Poyan, an ancient town, is a seaport. There has been a shipping that took place between India and China through this port. Today, Mysun is a, one of the UNESCO World Heritage Center with a good infrastructure. This bridge leads us to see the ancient monuments in ruins. Once we cross the bridge, I was not allowed to take our car, I had to go in this official jeep 
as inside is protected, they will not allow outside vehicles. This is a group giving information. Okay, now you listen to the history. Yeah. Firstly, I want you to learn Vietnamese. Interesting question for you now. In the recent times, over 100 years, who discovered Misa? What? What's that? Male lingo means a penis. Male power. Main power, a penis, linga, a very big, <laughs> and female is for uni, the older. It has a hole in the middle. Huh? <laughs> okay, so the bomb. They just talk that the Vikong was the thing hiding there, and they bomb. They knew the mission, but they didn't care, you know. And you remember, Misong here was a main site of the most important jump. The miss together. The matter of missing, we don't know. And then, the bricks were smoothed closely. The smooth. Finally, I am at the one of the sites of the Mysoon. This area, Mysoon was discovered by a French soldier as he was wandering in these jungles <coughs> sometime in 1800s. Currently, only these damaged structures are present and the French archaeologists have classified them with A, B, C, D, E and then given some numericals with their excavation. And the temples are built on the basis of the Hindu architecture. They represent to me more of a South Indian architecture than the North Indian architecture because of their rectangular shape as seen on this one or on this one. From a different angle is what I am seeing. This is considered as Shiva. The head has been stolen by French and is said to be in the Paris, only the tarso remains here. Again from the ruins one can see the pattern of the South Indian temple architecture. Even Cham they could not understand, right? Okay, now I would like to... Going around one can see several of these structures in ruins. And I will explain the one of the most modern ruin by who. This particular building with its GoPro missing is considered the museum. This is the brick used by the Cham people, which they cut from the clay put a herbal glue, burnt it once and then covered with oil, burnt it again, put wood on this. Even as of today it is strong, there is no gap, there is no algae. This is the restorated area of the modern time with the algae because the technology of charm people has not been duplicated. What is this B-52 bombers doing in this area? During the Vietnam War, the American government bombed this area, destroying this Musin temple complexes. They decided to show it and make people aware of it. The restoration is not paid for by the US government, but by the UNESCO. This is another example 
After I visiting Hiroshima, I am seeing a destruction that is painful to watch. Some of the artifacts, including Sima and all, in this area. Entrance to the main temple that was pictured earlier. As I go inside to the main sanctum, I see the base of the Shivalingam. Underneath, buried, is the Kalasha containing the ashes of the king, possibly Bhadravarman, who was cremated, keeping with the Hindu ritualistic pattern. Oh yes, there are bats on the ceiling. I didn't want to photograph them. With some tourists going through the ruins. Another temple part with the entrance. One can see the base of a murti that has been removed. Different shape of ling which is more biological than religious as seen in the usual three bases of square Brahma, Akta, Tasha, Vishnu and on the top being the ling of Shiva. Here to be the foundation for the pillars. These are the various pillars. With the roof gone, one of the inner sanctum of the Shiva temple. One can see close by there are several Shiva temples. Possibility these kings are buried underneath. Each one decided to build one for themselves. This is the Pali language and the guide keep on saying this is Sanskrit. While other structures are brick, some are sandstone. One of the craters from B-52 bombers. This shows how the murtis were built. Easy to build with the clay and then burn it in place. I have not seen this individual brick being put together for a murti in uh, Indian temples. For example, the murti has to be carved from a single stone. For example, in uh, Belur, they found that one murti that was uh, finished was not suitable because there was some water and frog inside that was abandoned and a new one has to be made. Whereas in Anchor and here I am seeing totally different way maybe due to geographical reasons and the availability of the materials around and the technology existed at that time. In each of these places this uh, writings was erected so as to tell the thing what it was and to my knowledge this is in Pali language. Finally a Nandi. Of course many of them are displaced due to earlier wars and other destruction may not represent the original location. This is a example of modern destruction by American government using B-52 bombs and shows the destruction. Their misintelligence indicated Viet Cong were here, no one was here, and no one was killed. Only thing they have destroyed is the most valuable human heritage ruthlessly with no gain to anybody including to themselves. This is that crater 
that was done by the P-52 bomber. Finally, one should thank the American government for not using nuclear bomb as they did in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The destruction should have been very much more. At least they were very kind in limiting their destruction. Cham Museum of Danang. This is where large number of uh, This is where the large number of charm sculptures are kept. Other stolen ones by the French are in naturally in Paris. A small number are present in the History Museum in Saigon. This is an outdoor exhibit of Garuda or the Vana of Vishnu. They did pay attention to elephants and even they worshipped it. This appear to be two warriors. I would not be able to tell the age as it is not labeled. It's one can expect at the very entrance is a Ganesha. Unfortunately, it is not labeled. It is made extremely well or well preserved, but the labeling is not clear, so it's hard to say whether it is more recent or it is made earlier. To clarify, this is a uh, duplicate. The original is inside. Some columns are well preserved. Again, these are all of a Hindu architecture. It is clearly established that the Cham construction was based on the Hindu temple architecture, as can be seen here. This is Lingam representing Trimurti. The base is square representing Brahma with his four heads. At the middle is Vishnu with the eight faces and on the top is the phallus representing Shiva. Unfortunately, it is not again labeled. Just in Vietnamese, the name is given as Lingam. Another piece of fine workmanship. These are all made of such sandstone. And the era extended anywhere from seventh century to nineteenth century. This head of Lokeshwara was later. For example, in the beginning it was a Hindu temples. Then for a while there is a Buddhism, especially Mahayana came, lasted for a short period, then came the Hinduism. So also the some of these sculptures. The one I filmed earlier is to represent the chariot, as one can see the wheels. This one is simply labeled as head of God. There is no third eye, so it is not Shiva. In the absence of uh, arms, such as Chaturbhuja, it cannot be Vishnu. Mainly it was a Shivaite kingdom with some Vishnu sculptures and rarely there was a Krishna and Ganesh and Shakti. This particular piece clearly represents the impact of the Cambodian architecture of construction. This is labeled as Goddess Uma or Parvati. One see a bow which Parvati never held in the Hindu concept and as a Vahana could be bull which is again unusual in the original 
Indian Hindu mythology. This is Goddess Lakshmi, clearly seen of the Cambodian impact. This Tarso is said to be Goddess Uma, but the beauty of it is the preservation of the fine workmanship. Finally, this is Brahma with his four heads. Underneath is uh, Vishnu. Overall, the labeling is extremely poor, even though there is a rich preservation. This is again Uma, labeled as a goddess of light. Uma or Parvati or Durga is considered is the most complex and the most powerful of all the goddesses and is referred to as Shakti, but the Lakshmi is not referred as powerful as Parvati. This is Shiva. I am unable to recognize the third eye on the forehead, maybe due to deterioration. This is Shiva, even though deteriorated so badly, face cannot even recognize. But because of the Vahana Nandi, it's very easy to say this is Shiva. This is Vishnu, very easy to recognize because of the Chaturbhuja and the items he is holding in his arms namely Shank, Chakra. This is again Trimurti Ling with the Yoni or the base. But what I have seen elsewhere, including in India, is the lower two-thirds, namely that of uh, uh, Brahma and Vishnu is buried underneath. Only the lingam top with the yoni is what is seen outside, but here it looks very unusual unless the display in the museum is like this for whatever the reason, including refusal on the early French to give proper recognition to Hindu origin. For example, everywhere they say the first king was Bhadravarman and they trace their ancestry to coming from the Borneo island of Malaysia. If so, how did all this Hindu name came in and even their worship was all Hindu king gods and the Hindu kings had a Hindu names. That segment is never given proper credit or recognition. This is a huge shivaling. with almost lotus on the base and also the dancers. This is possibly one of the biggest Shivalinga I have ever seen. This is from 10th century. As I mentioned earlier, the Brahma and Vishnu segment is not shown. It is shown in the proper or the usual manner. This is the ancient map of Mysore and the description is given in French and uh, Vietnamese and not in English in a very understandable way. This is the 7th century sandstone. The outer shape of it is almost like that of tombstone of uh, Islamic burial ground that are seen in India. Even though there was no Islamic invasion at that time, and one can see the Lippi, which again must have originated from Pali. This is the warrior, and the 
facial features are very typical of Cambodian. What it may mean also that the features of the Cham people were similar to that of the Cambodian features. I finally found the original Vinayaka. Earlier I just did that a, a copy of it. Still this is extremely well preserved. For the first time in any museum I am seeing the brothers together. This is the biological son of Shiva and Parvati that is Skanda. Easy to recognize because his Vahana is peacock. Unfortunately, the face is damaged, and this is the Ganesh in a standing posture. Why the face is damaged is uh, there used to be multiple wars between the Cham and the Kampocha kings. Even though they both were Hindus, they were destroying each other's temples. This is Dasha Buja. Durga, the symbolism of each of these arms is to represent their various abilities, which is symbolic, not that they had so many arms. These are a bunch of uh, musicians and dancers of that era. It has got to be Krishna because of the flute unless they are trying to show you a musician. This is Vishnu, as you can see, Sarpa, and also from his Ambalikas, the birth of Brahma. I always wondered to what caste did the gods belong. For example, Rama was a Kshatriya, so was Krishna. So when I see this Janva, uh, at least they belong to the upper three Varnas. Meaning that the god doesn't have to be a Brahmin, even though for uh, centuries the worship of god or uh, spreading the knowledge stayed in their hands. For the division of the labor in the society. This is metallic bodhisattva thara. Other piece, much well preserved from area of Dong to Wang. Similar one, even though one can say the Egyptian ones are bigger, but the artwork is a lot more precise in this, even though the size is small, the Egyptian ones are just huge, but the art part is as precise as totally lacking. Even the fabric folds are seen so clearly. This is a huge Dwara Palaka. This is Gaja Lakshmi. These are photographs of the excavation and many of these pieces were removed from the excavation and uh, put in, in this museum. This Dwara Palaka and other pieces. This is Shiva, even though the headband I see, I do not see Ganga and again I am unable to clearly see the third eye, it's vaguely visible, but the statue is pretty huge. This is a temple pillar with the dancers. One can see the preservation of the good workmanship, especially of the stone carvings.
visible so clearly. The bridge of the dose is not flat, even though it is tendency is there, but still it is more prominent in that era of the people. This is labeled as a worshipper because his arms are folded. Finally, a Rushi is seen. The first king, Badra Varman, felt that he is a descendant of uh, sage Count Anya. The other sage that is recognized is Birugu the charm history. Even the Dashara, Dashavatara was recognized. For example, this is Balarama, an avatar of Vishnu statue in the museum. Brahma is more clearly represented, whereas uh, Durga Ruma is shown as a Chaturbhuja, and the face is damaged and the Garuda cannot be missed. You see Shiva, the preservation of this is extremely good and the third eye is very clearly marked. Nandi is not forgotten. Another fine piece, if you see the hair, you think it is a female, but and you see the moustache, you know, the gender. And the ear jewelry, so in that era both men and women decorated well, including with the necklaces. This is the bird's eye view of the Mysore. It is not labeled well as the whole place labeling is extremely poor for the richness of the artifacts they have here. The king Badravarman, for example, built the temple as a representation of God and the king. Even today, the festival of Kate festival occurs at the Puklong Garai Tower. The devotees worship Shiva. I really do not know when this festival occurs. Represented as a god king in this form. The devotees do similar to the Namaskar. Shank is blown drums beaten, offerings made, even there is a procession, the gods taken in this form, with women dancing, and even walking on the fire, all the pom-poms. Charm festival is held once a year in the seventh month of the Cham calendar it is a big festival of the Brahminist Cham community who think longevity of such gods as Poonagar, Poklang, the names have all changed to the Hindu from the Vietnamese language as well as their ancestors who support Cham people. Where the Kate festival in the Ni Tuan province is mainly takes place at the Po Nagar temple, Po Klang Gori Tower and Po Rom Tower. As I just came out of the museum, I saw this beautiful temple, possibly of a 
Taoist or a Buddhist temple. Looks very colorful and they were busy decorating for the Thak New Year that falls in a week. Outside there is a Tara confirming it could be a Buddhist temple.